So when I last left off, I was talking about the great Luke Ghost, the content producer who were around, I think mid to late 2000s, started posting on his channel, which he called Heavy Disc, I guess was the official name of his channel. And he was talking about this idea of inertial mass. But I think that Luke Ghost, for all of his hard work, never really reached elite speeds with his mechanics. He felt it, he felt a little bit of the magic, but he didn't get all of it. To really get all of it, to feel the rubber band effect completely, you need to use the sequencing that the method teaches you. This idea that everything is forward and off the back side, as your biomechanics launch the disc for you. The thing that I just demonstrated right there. Luke Ghost's form doesn't look like that. So even though he's talking about inertial mass, we can traffic in a more, I guess, advanced version of it. So talking about the idea of adding energy to the object, what you're essentially doing is imparting kinetic energy from your body into a very tiny little lightweight object that weighs 0.4 pounds. And the way that you do that, of course, is by using the muscles of your body to accelerate the object. But the key here is how fast do you do it? Do you do it over the long term or do you do it over a protracted period of time? If you do it over a long period of time, if you're swinging as so many people do, as I did for years, you pick up the disc and you yank on it with your arm from here, as I did for so many years. My God, my brain immediately goes, oh, I remember this, this horrible abyss that I trafficked in for like 15 years. You swing the disc and it begins to accelerate even before your foot touches down. Your whole brain is intentionally rotating you to throw it. And so you start pulling on it. And if you were to chart the acceleration of your object, it would be almost linear, like a straight line at an angle, of course. And then you have a little spike at the end. A little spike at the end as it rips off your hand, or actually more as like your brain lets it go. That's the way that most people who throw and are capped in their distance and are capped in their ability to advance as a player, that's how they throw. And if you were to look at their chart, it would look like that. But when you throw correctly, the way that I'm sequencing there, that acceleration is insanely quick. I'm talking like, I haven't, I haven't been able to time it yet, honestly, but I suspect that the disc is going from nearly stationary up to ballistic speed in about 0.05 seconds. A timing window of a 20th of a second is where most of the acceleration is happening. There's a big consequence to that, a huge one actually, and that is inertial mass increases tremendously because when an object accelerates, we all exist in a 1G gravitational field. Right now, at this moment, the core of the Earth, the mass, the center of mass at the center of the Earth is pulling everything on it downward at 9.8 meters per second per second, pulling you downward at 10 meters per second squared, which is why objects fall, pulled down from gravity. Well, you're being pulled into the ground too. And because the force is 1G, you weigh whatever your weight is. I weigh like a little over 170 right now. That sort of principle applies to things that are accelerating sideways too. So if an object is accelerating at 10 meters per second per second, probably looks about like that light as a feather, because it's in a 1G field. It's no different to go down than sideways. And in this case, the object accelerating at 1G feels weightless, like a piece of paper. It's like a paper plate. Your brain can't push a bunch of energy into a paper plate, it wouldn't even try. If I told you to throw a paper plate as hard as you could, your body wouldn't even let you throw it very hard because you have neuroprotective mechanisms in your whole body to protect you from hurting yourself most of the time. So when a disc is light, whee, there's no power in it. It's anemic and you can't even trick your brain into throwing it hard because it's a lightweight object. But if you accelerate the object fast, where instead of the acceleration happening out to the release point, it's slow, insane. And it goes from zero to like, I don't know what my release speed is, it's certainly over 70, I think. Up from zero to 70 miles an hour in 0.05 seconds, guess what happens? The G-forces skyrocket. It's like accelerating straight down into the ground. When you accelerate fast, you feel weight. Like if you've ever been on a roller coaster and a roller coaster teeters off the top of a ramp, whoo, and it picks up speed, you go, Whoa! 
You get that like ugh, feeling, right? That's every atom in your body gaining weight, inertial mass, as the kinetic, as the potential gravitational energy turns into kinetic energy as you go over the ramp. You begin to feel heavy and all the mass in your body presses against your internal organs and your lungs, compressing them. You feel that for a second. Same thing as accelerating in a car. Same thing as accelerating a disc. It's the same principle, of course. Only the disc would, if you were on the disc, you would die because it probably hits about 30 Gs, I think, when I accelerate it at this way. So guess what happens? An object that is in a 30 G field weighs 30 times as much, 12 and a half pounds instead of 0.45, to say nothing for the mass of my entire throwing arm, which is also very you know, heavy. It probably weighs, I, mean, I can't weigh it, but it probably weighs 15 pounds. So it's the 15 pounds of my arm plus the weight of the disc accelerating insanely fast. My brain goes, aha, big heavy thing. Let's push a ton of kinetic energy into that from my legs, from my core, from my shoulders, all of it going into this giant, huge, like meat hammer with a disc attached to it. That's how you generate true power in the sport. We're trafficking in inertial mass, but there's an extra component to it, which I'm gonna loop all the way back down, back to the bow story. Why did that work? Why was I able to get that extra distance? Because when you pull the bow tight, you create tension in the arc of the bow, vibrating matter, energy that's captive, but the energy gets dissipated into the air. The air has an interaction. The air molecules are bouncing against the bow. The bow is bouncing against air molecules. And they're transferring energy back and forth, and it's getting lost through entropy, which means the longer you pull the bow tight, the more energy you lose that's bound up in it. And if you hold the bow, you know, knocking it here, ready to fire, if you yank it at the last second, you get a huge burst of energy that flows through the bow from that yank, and before that energy can dissipate, you've let it go, and you get this extra power. The rubber band effect is the same. It's exactly the same thing. When you let your arm be super loose, you create this elasticity around the mass of the disc at the extension of your hand. Your arm comes back, and you've seen it all before. When you watch Eagle crab his way down the thing, and he's holds his hand out and just mystically floats in the air. It looks like he's grabbed, gripped onto a pole and he's just walking away from it. Well, what's actually happening is that Eagle is just rotating his shoulders. The mass of the disc is holding it in place. So as soon as Eagle, his arm is completely loose, except for just the extension. So when he braces, there's this instantaneous moment where everything has begun to come forward, but the disc's mass, its inertial mass, is holding it in place, anchoring it for just an instant until his body pulls on it. But he gives a little thrust of energy right at that last second in anticipation of the disc reaching its apex of the swing. All the guys who bomb, you see Borella doing this, where he extends his arm, boop, like that, same exact thing. And you, once you understand where the disc is gonna go fast, and you're able to keep your arm totally loose in the backswing, you anticipate it too. You know exactly when it's gonna happen. So you do the same thing. You do that little bowstring thing where you just let the disc float away from you almost. And suddenly you grip it tight because you know it's about to get heavy. It pulls your arm taut like a bow with that last little thrusting burst of energy and all that elasticity that's added through that motion remains in your shoulder and in the muscles of the obliques, all of it is still there, vibrating. And before it can dissipate, bang, off it goes. That is the rubber band effect. And when you accelerate the disc fast, correctly, using Method 2.0 stuff, you'll feel it too. It will no longer be a mystery. Just get ready, it's coming soon.